Welcome back to Ice Skating. Like most Olympic hopefuls, Johnny and Tiffany Stiegler spend countless hours honing their skills. These determined athletes have devoted much of their young lives to realizing their skating dreams. In the future, we would like to be on the Olympic and world team. Of course, we want to make it one day to the 2002 or the 2006, I think. And, um, but right now, it's just like, it's so far ahead that we're just trying to do what we can do right now. But if Tiffany and Johnny ever do join the elite ranks of Olympic gold medalists, their lives will be changed in ways they can't yet imagine. The gold medal really opened a lot of wonderful doors and lots of opportunities for me. It's been a career that kind of has a life of its own. It just keeps going on and on and, and takes me into avenues that have been real interesting for me. What's more, according to four-time world champion Kurt Browning, the financial rewards of skating can be incredible. I don't know any other sport where an athlete at such a young age can have such a monetary return. Uh, I think figure skating is the only one. Gymnastics, they're young, but you know the, the rewards are not the same. So it's a very unusual sport that way, very unusual. For many skaters, touring exhibitions like Champions on Ice and Stars on Ice will be their first step from amateur competition to lucrative professional careers. Tom Collins, founder of Champions on Ice, sees it this way. It's great for that skater to get the exposure to go out and go on a tour where you can perform in front of 15,000 people every night. It just it enhances their career very, very much. And uh, we enjoy having them. They learn a lot on the tour that they wouldn't learn in amateur skating. Just traveling in general and handling the pressures of skating every night in front of 15,000 people. So it works out very well for both parties. Turning professional and, and joining a tour like Stars on Ice, um, it's, it's hard. You're, you're away from friends and family for four or five months out of a year, and you just have to get used to it by the time. I think we get a lot more in return, though. In fact, modern skaters enjoy many opportunities that would have been unheard of only a few years ago. There are a lot of, like, 13-year-olds with agents now, which didn't exist before. You know, I mean, there was no way to make money. Now it's like, you know, you're, an agent's paying you thousands and thousands of dollars just to sign, you know? So it's a whole different planet now. With us, it was like, oh, man, I hope I win. Wouldn't that be great? Or I hope I'm fourth, so I, you know, we can all be together on the tour, you know, to get to tour a little bit. Now it's, I have my agent call the tour promoter and see if, you know, I get on and then we're going to go. Skate. There's a lot of millionaires right now. For years, all sorts of athletes have endorsed everything from breakfast cereal to aftershave. But today, there's an ever-increasing demand for celebrity skaters. Gary Toby, president of Hayworth Marketing and Media, has signed many pro skaters to national ad campaigns for retail stores like Mervyn's and Target. He believes there are definite reasons why Americans have gone crazy over skaters. What you're getting with the skater is the real person all the time. They're not really performing um, a ro another role. Scott Hamilton is Scott Hamilton. Ekaterina Gordieva is Ekaterina Gordieva, and Christy Yamaguchi is Christy Yamaguchi. So uh, they really get to see the real person you don't get that with an actor. And they really stand for a lot of the things that I think families want their children to stand for. And that, that, that's important. I never dreamed that I will ever have perfume named by me. <laughs> Commercials are just the tip of the media iceberg. Skaters have also made the transition to television shows, like the CBS special Snowed In on Ice. In this arena, they're expected not only to skate, but to act as well. In my many years on the ice, I, you, know, you think I've experienced about everything, but each year it's a whole other thing. And, and this year it's more dialogue, more acting. I've been shooting here for 10 days, shooting, and I haven't, I haven't skated yet. You not only have to skate here, but you also can, like, you can see yourself on TV and see what you can improve, that you have to, to be an actor. I don't have many 
words to say in that during the special, but I still have some lines to say, and this is something very different for me. There are certainly big rewards waiting for those who make the long uphill skate to the top, but with big money often comes big pressure. It's um, business. You know, it's a whole different world now, and and I, I think it's tougher. You know, I think it's tougher to be a, a teenager now than it's ever been before. I think it's tougher to be um, a competitive figure skater now than ever before because there's so many distractions, there's so many demands. Nowadays, it's are you on David Letterman? Were you on the cover of People? I mean, it's a whole different. It's like models, and not just models. They're super everything, and that's what skating has turned into. Despite all these challenges, some skaters take to fame and fortune like. Well, like penguins do ice. Coming up next, Johnny and Tiffany struggle to master their moves and make their dreams come true. We can do it. We can do this. Welcome back to the E! Original Special Ice Skating. After months of training, Johnny and Tiffany Stiegler are just days away from a series of competitions that could advance their skating careers to a new level. We've learned that always when you go out and compete, you do the best what you can do. No matter what place you get, the people are going to enjoy it and you're going to feel happy about it. I like com competition because it just makes, it's like, I, Johnny and I are really good like competition skaters. We are really focused and um, we're like, you know, nervous and we, we skate better when we're nervous, I think. It's definitely a challenge and um, when you can perform and at, at the top of your level and, um, you know, hopefully get on the podium under that kind of pressure, then it's it's a thrill it's just um there's no greater feeling although fueled by the thrill of competition most skaters eventually leave their careers behind to perform professionally no judges <laughs> to worry about out there uh to mark down every little mistake you do but you know the audience obviously is our motivation here and uh every night we might, might not feel great and feel up to it but i think um, the audience really gets us through the show every night so it's, it's a lot of fun at shows such as the discover stars on ice thousands of fans watch their favorite skaters perform for the sheer joy of it it's just so interesting for me to work in this direction to work for the audience not for the judges not for myself not for the technique but just to entertain the audience to express to try to express myself because i feel i have so much inside and it was so difficult to get it outside while I was uh, pressed by all the pressure, all the judges and all the marks. The whole professional entertainment world is about experimentation, about um, also doing things that are established. Uh, you know, you're, you're catering to 17,000 people a night and they're all different and they all come from different backgrounds putting together a show that really kind of is all-encompassing and saying okay we're trying to entertain everyone is really a big challenge as a pro everything is for the audience and it's always a show and it's always really exciting when you're out performing and you see all these people out there watching you is is very fulfilling we're still nervous before we go on the ice, but it's definitely different than com competitive pressure. Tiffany and Johnny thrive on that competitive pressure. They are more excited than nervous as they pack for a major international competition in Croatia. But they hit their first snag when they reach the airport, and Johnny can't find their music. Yeah, I'm not there. I don't know what I did with them. I looked everywhere. Luckily, moments before the plane takes off, their coach finds a copy of the music in her bag. Hello, oh, we're excited. Later, Don. Later. Bye. In Europe, there's no time for sightseeing. <laughs> Tiffany and Johnny must continue to rehearse their programs. Nothing can be left to chance. Every move must be rehearsed again and again.
These rehearsals not only give skaters a chance to get used to a new rink, but it also gives the judges a chance to check out the competitors. Later on the week, there's judges that actually come and watch your practices. And those are more important because judges, they um, kind of, you know, see where you would play it, you know. I mean, they kind of figure it out in their head. They're talking about the Ukrainian pair team that won last year. Yeah. And then they're talking about us. And, yeah, and then they're talking about one Russian, one of the Russian teams and um, one other team. The skating order of these teams is determined by a draw. Number 18. A lot of people think that it's, you know, best to be at the end, and it probably is in the judges' eyes that they, remen that they remember you last. We drew 18 out of 23, and there was only three numbers left, and um, it was 5, 3, and 18, so we drew good. Johnny and Tiffany seem to be gliding along smoothly, but when we return, find out if a bump in the ice shatters their dream. Everybody's telling me to pull out.